Let's face it, there are so many things that can go wrong when using film for photography. Shooting film is like navigating a minefield. <laughs> there, there are so many ways that you could lose a, a frame or a roll, a roll of um, important memories, a trip, an event, a frame of a once-in-a-lifetime once shot. I was reminded of this recently on my last video where I was using film, at the end of the video, I had ended and said, well, if I find something on the way back to the car, I will put the photo up at the end of the video. Because I had a, a couple frames left. I think it was two or three frames. And typically I shoot a whole roll. So when it came time to develop the film, I was in a big hurry and was thinking I had advanced the film to the, all the way to the end. <laughs> I uh, just proceeded to open the camera. So I lost the last frame. It could have been a lot worse. When I opened it, it was pretty subdued light. I could have lost the whole, the whole shoot. That doesn't happen to me very often. <laughs> In fact, I don't. I can't remember the last time that's happened. When you're new to film photography, just starting out, a uh, roll of film should say have a warning on it saying proceed at your own peril, because there's just so many ways to <laughs> have that shot messed up, and uh, it's heartbreaking. It's it's heart wrenching to lose a frame or a roll to human error. And it's sometimes just bad luck. It's just stuff that's beyond your control. So I'm going to run through some of the pitfalls you might find, or I've seen through the years, of ways to lose some images. So the first one, of course, like I just explained, opening the back of the camera before the roll has been advanced either back into the cassette or wound all the way through, like in medium format. I think many of shot many of a shot has been ruined doing that. Another way you could have something go wrong is a mechanical errors or the or maybe not loading the film correctly and it not advancing. So you're either shooting a frame over a frame or you're you've shot a whole roll worth of stuff and you realize, oh, the film never advanced. <laughs> All those shots never happened. How about setting your ASA or ISO to the wrong setting. So say you're shooting ISO 50 film and you're setting it to ISO to 1000. Most likely those shots aren't gonna turn out. <laughs> yeah, I may have done that. Scratched film can be a, a real issue with film photography. There are software programs that help mitigate that when you're scanning an image, but if you're doing wet printing, you're kind of stuck with it. One of the culprits for a scratch film, it's like in 35 millimeter, if you've got something on your pressure plate, always check to make sure it's clean and there's no, and it's smooth and there's no, no grit there because that, that you'd be scraping your film right across that. Another way you could get some scratches is if you're doing large format and your holder is dusty or you've got some grit in here and you slide the film in across the, not good. Now light, light leaks are a real common issue for film, especially nowadays, because we're all using old film cameras and um, the seals just degrade over time. On a shoot at the coast last year, um, I wasn't smart enough to realize that I probably shouldn't have this camera out in direct sunlight for a prolonged period of time because I had a, a whole roll that was that had uh, leaks along the edges. I was able to salvage a lot of that, but it made the it made it much harder. <laughs> I haven't had that issue since I've been just keeping the camera in a bag until I'm ready to shoot. So at some point I'm going to have to redo the the seals on that camera. But a lot of older cameras will definitely need their either their bellows to be fixed. There may be pinholes in their bellows or there may be light leaks around the seals in the camera. It's just depending on what, what kind of camera. 
but light leaks are, are definitely a problem for older um, cameras. And that's basically what we've got to work with nowadays. So that's one that a lot of people will probably have some experience with in the future. For your large format folks, a way to destroy a um, sheet of film is when you've set your shot, shot up, for you forget to close the lens. So when you're, when you're focusing, you have the lens open and if you forget to close it and you pull the dark side on the uh, film holder while it's open, you've ruined the shot. <laughs> and the only time I've done that, I, I've caught it and what I lost was a, it was an expensive mistake. I lost a sheet of film, but that, that is um, something you got to think about. If you get in a hurry, that's an easy mistake to make. And I'm sure everybody that shoots large format film, uh, anybody that shoots large format has had that happen. Another one for the large format folks. Um, when you load your film in the dark, making sure that you're under this little lip here, because if you only get one through and the other one's up on top of the lip and you slide this closed and you don't notice it, it can either will cause a light leak or the film won't be laying flat so it's not going to be sharp. That can be a problem. Another one would be to forget once you've taken the shot to return the dark slide on the other turn it around before when you put it in. Um, so you know that it's been exposed because if you think it's been unexposed you'll shoot another frame over it running two shots. I've never done that. Well, maybe I have. <laughs> During film development, if you develop your own film, it's also a uh, minefield to navigate. So many ways to mess up a roll of film. You can make a mistake loading the reel, which is right off the bat. <laughs> if your film is touching film uh, during processing, it's going to just basically destroy whatever is being touched during the, the development process. So you gotta be very careful to, to not, uh, to properly load the, the cassette. Another problem that can occur during development is bubbles on your film. And that's caused by um, not giving it a good wrap at the beginning of the process. I like to do it a couple times, I'm paranoid. So I, I will um, continuously to rot um, agitate the film. And then at that point I will give it a good wrap and then do another agitation uh, about 10 seconds every minute from there on. So that's important to, to get rid of those bubbles because they will, if they stay on the film, that is not allowing the developer to contact the film. That, that could be a problem. Another issue could be not properly putting the lid on the uh, uh, tank. I have a Patterson tank and if it doesn't click in, it, uh, it looks like it's light tight. It looks like it's sealed, but if you were to pick that section up, oh, it wasn't locked in, there goes the film. <laughs> um, I haven't had that issue, but I, I've come close to it a couple times thinking it had locked in and I just, for some reason, I just, could, I felt it when I was um, in the way of switching from development to to fix and luckily I, I it was tight enough to keep the light from seeping in but if I would have not been paying attention that would have been another roll and, it, and film is really fragile when it, especially when it's wet so be really careful when you take it off the cassette um, or if you're working with sheet film try not to let it rub against anything because you're going to get scratches very easy um, it's really easy to bend to pinch film and once it's bent it, in uh, pinched it's really hard to to scan or anything so you just got to really handle it with care if you use a squeegee to, to wipe off your film which is something I, I don't do <laughs> I don't even touch the film after I've developed it anymore I I, I just uh, put a little wetting agent on it I shake it off as hard as I can then I just hang it to dry and I have found that that has worked very well for me without touching the 
film. Because inevitably, if you, you run something along the film, it's really soft, especially on the emulsion side, it's going to scratch. So be careful there. And if you send your film out to, uh, to be processed, I've had damaged film in the process. I've had it come back from shipping uh, damaged. So you're not, even you are not uh, immune to the possibility of losing your shots. Why, why would I want to shoot film with, all the, with everything against me, with, with uh, so many possibilities of, of that shot being ruined? <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't even think about it anymore. It's, um, I, I do get a bit nervous when I develop my film. I get a little anxious. I think, think that's a good thing. It keeps me on task and, and makes sure that I'm not getting sloppy, and paying attention to what I'm doing, except last time, of course. Nothing feels worse in photography than losing the shot or a roll to a mistake or an error, either caused by yourself or just a mechanical bad luck. I, I, I think uh, there's a euphoria that you get as a film shooter that I don't think you'll ever experience shooting digital. And I think it comes from that hard fought, what that film has to have gone through to get to the final stage. I'm sure I've missed a bunch of the pitfalls and things that can happen to your film along the way. Feel free to, to add yours in the comments below. I can't have been the only one that has lost a little film through the years. Well, if you shoot film, I wish you a lot of luck on your next outing. And if you shoot digital, I also wish you luck too. So I'm gonna to end today's video right here. Until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.